Software-defined radio dongles are a fun way to explore the radio spectrum and do a lot of fun things you might have never thought of. Software-defined radio dongles, or SDR dongles, are small USB devices that act as an interface between your radio antenna and your computer. Unlike dedicated radios that have a set of electronic components mounted on its circuit boards to demodulate, filter, amplify, and convert the radio frequency, or RF, energy into sounds you can hear, Software-defined radios use software to act on the signals instead. In the ham radio world, new ham transceivers use software-defined radio techniques to tune the frequencies and do all sorts of actions that allow the operator to hear the signals clearly. These radios change RF into digital data streams almost immediately after entering the radio itself via the antenna. Instead of multiple electronic components acting on the signal, digital signal processors do the heavy lifting. Digital data streams are changed back to RF or audio signals just before hitting the speaker or exiting the radio going back to the antenna as a transmitted signal. An SDR dongle plays the same role of converting the RF signal into a digital data stream that a computer program can act upon. These dongles are not for transmitting. They are receive devices. There are a number of brands and models for these devices. In the inexpensive category, you should look for a dongle that uses an RTL2832 chip as its processor. We're going to take a look at a very popular SDR dongle called the RTL SDR Blog version 3, available on eBay and RTLSDR.com. They'll also be available on Amazon when Amazon's COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. I got mine on Amazon. Let's take a quick look at one of the combo kits I recommend. It includes the RTL SDR dongle, an antenna mount with both long and short telescoping antenna elements, a small tripod stand, as well as a suction cup mount that allows you to mount the antenna to a window or other smooth surface. Uh, first, there is the SDR dongle itself. It comes in a little uh, static proof bag here. So we'll open that up. As you can see, there's really not a lot to it. Uh, it's labeled as version 3. It's got the USB alpha on one side and the SMA covered with a little um, uh, plastic protector on the other. So that's the, the dongle itself. Uh, not too much for that. So the antenna comes with a couple of supports. This is just a little um, small tripod. It's got a, a screw base locking ball head on it with a uh, what looks to be like a quarter 20 screw on the tip of it here, which allows you to connect the antenna uh, connector on it. We'll show you that now. This is the antenna connector. For those of you that go back a while, you may recognize something very similar to this on the back of your uh, old analog television. Um, it has the connector for the uh, tripod and the section cup that I'll show you in just a moment. A little bit of cord, an SMA connector here. Uh, and then these little guys uh, can pivot to allow you to connect uh, one of two different kinds of um, antenna arms, if you will. And they are these. First is the longer antenna arm. This is about probably 10 inches long, and then it's extensible. So it will remind you of the old rabbit ears on a TV from your past, perhaps. Uh, these simply screw in like this. And they make what is basically a dipole style antenna with feed point in the middle, and then two of these um, on each of the connectors. And so we can connect them like this, and then you can mount them 
extend them to the to the, the distance that best works. Um, there are some formulas to help you extend these to the proper length based on the frequency you're targeting. That's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about in this video, but know that those are out there. These would be used in the um, the the lower frequency range, the two meter range, you know, 140, um, 144 megahertz, that kind of thing, because they are a little longer. Also included in the set then are some small ones, and these little guys um, go on the same way, and they too will extend out but not very far. So these are going to be up in the higher levels, you know, um, thousand megahertz, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so for those much higher frequencies, the, the frequency uh, wavelength is smaller. And so to be resonant, the antenna has to be shorter. And so that's what these smaller ones are for. The next thing that comes with the antenna kit is another mount. This one's a suction cup mount, so you could mount this to um, the side of a smooth uh, bookcase or window. Uh, again, you can rotate this, loosen the ball, and then this ball mount will rotate, and then you can screw this onto the mount using whatever sized antenna arms you need for the frequency that you are uh, targeting. And then last but not least with the antenna kit, is a coil of uh, coax. These come with, again, the SMA connectors, uh, male on one side, female on the other. Uh, and this is a pretty lengthy uh, coil of wire. So you can get the uh, antenna mounted, you know, perhaps on a window that's away from where you're planning to listen or, uh, uh, you know, get it stretched out or maybe placed a little higher. So this is a real handy component too. So those are the components that come with the RTL SDR with the antenna. Now the antenna you can buy separately if you've already got a dongle uh, from the RTL SDR side. I think it's about 12 bucks or otherwise the kit with the antenna included comes for about 30, 33 dollars, uh, which makes it a pretty good buy. One of the other things you should consider getting with your dongle is the accompanying book entitled The Hobbyist Guide to RTL SDR. It's available as an ebook on Amazon, and if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's included in the Amazon Prime Lending Library. This book will give you a good overview of the dongle as well as some of the software that you can use to interface with it. It also has several sections on various experiments and projects you can conduct. Let's take a quick look at one of the basic software packages you can use to explore the radio spectrum. Keep in mind that the little antenna kit that comes with the set I recommend will get you some basic signal coverage, but a larger loop antenna like the MLA30 that I previously reviewed on this channel will provide better overall performance in many of the bands. In this clip, we'll look at one of the SDR interfaces that allow you to process and then hear the signals being sent to your computer via the dongle. It's called SDR Sharp. It uses the sign you might recognize as a hashtag that is also the musical instrument sign for a sharp. The software is freely downloadable from www.airspy.com. The download is a zip file, so you'll need to extract it into a folder on your computer. Don't use a folder in the programs directory, however. Double click the install rtlsdr.bat file to install the program. BAT files are more of the previous generation of install files. They simply list several commands the computer must do to install the various files and executables. Now it's time to plug in your dongle. Wait for the chime that indicates your PC has recognized a new USB device. Next, you'll need to use a program called Zadig to install the proper driver. Right-click on the Zadig file in the folder you extracted the zip file into and select Run as Administrator.
When the window opens up, click on the Option tab and select List All Devices and deselect Ignore Hubs and Composite Parents. Use the drop-down list and select the choice Bulk In Interface, parentheses, Interface 0. In this case, the RTL2832HIDIR counts as the same thing. You should see the RTL2832 listed as the driver with a small green arrow pointing to the driver called WinUSB version 6 point something. Below that, you should see a UDB ID entry as 0BDA2838. Click Replace Driver. This might take a few minutes, so just wait it out. If you get a security warning, click the choice that allows you to install it anyway. Now, before we leave this particular screen, I want to point out a couple of things. Um, first, in the what we just completed it with that Zadig, your screen may be a little bit different in that the Zadig um, drivers I had already loaded. And so in the um, little box to the left of the green arrow, you're going to see that RTL uh, labeled driver, not the W or the Win label driver. Uh, and so beware that uh, because I'd already loaded that, they are going to be just a little bit different. And then I think I said the uh, RTL 38. 3.2 uh, driver, and of course, as you saw, it's the 3.8.2.8 driver, so my apologies for that. Now, before we leave this particular display, I want to point out to you that there are a number of other applications that came with that download to include um, ADSB Spy, which is a way to track airplanes, this Astro Spy, which will get you into um, radio astronomy, and so there's some very interesting applications that came with this download, as well as many of the other applications on the RTL SDR um, website. And in this case, I would encourage you to make use of the quick start guides that are available there. They're very good and they can help you uh, get this all installed. And so now let's go and take a look at the SDR Sharp software itself. So here we are with the uh, the SDR Sharp open. There are a couple of things I need to point out to you before you get started. Um, I have had this running when yours opens. These screens are going to be blank. We'll talk about them in just a minute. Uh, but I wanted to point out that you wanted to make sure that your source says the RTL uh, SDR USB here in this particular drop down box. And you can see that there are a number of choices depending on the brand that you own. We're, we're dealing with the RTL SDR, so that's what it shows. When you go up into this uh, cog icon, you get some uh, other things you need to check on. One, the RTL2832 OEM here. Sampling rate, this is fine. Uh, and then you need to have some gain. So without gain, you're not going to have any sound. So be aware of that. You can have the automatic gain control from the RTL or from another tuner. Uh, or if you disconnect or uncheck all of them, you can just set the gain. Uh, and I've got mine set, oh, about two-thirds of the way up. And so you need to start off there. And notice that we're doing that with the program off. Now, to start getting the information here in these areas, you just simply hit Start, and it goes live. And so hopefully you're hearing some of this uh, underneath. I'm going to turn the volume down. Um, because I don't want to get a copyright hit with YouTube uh, since this is a radio station. So at this point then, you can see that where we have these humps, that's a station. I'm in the FM band. The broadcast band is labeled here at the bottom. And that's based on one of the choices I've made over here in these uh, areas where you can make selections. And so to tune the radio, yeah, I simply double click. So right now I'm tuned here at 92. Three, and that's where I'm at. If I wanted to move up here, I would simply move my mouse cursor into that next big area of signal coverage. You can see it's bright yellow and double click. And then now I've made a change and I'm recording uh, and listening to that. Now, since this is a digital uh, device, you can see up here at the top that the station 
and some of the information that you might normally see uh, scrolling across the radio in your car, for example, is also up there in the top. You can change bands pretty easily. Let's go here and let's go up to the hand band. So I'm going to hit the top of the zero. I go up to one. I'm going to go down here to four. So now we've got our zoom here. We've expanded that out a little bit. I can change the range button by moving it a little bit and change where the movement is. And then uh, I can start understanding what I have in terms of contrast by making a change here in the waterfall. So now I'm up here in the hand bands. I've got 146.52 selected. I know that there is a, a repeater in this area. And um, and so that was a, um, uh, a press, uh, somebody kerchunk that repeater. And so you saw that go back up. Uh, we can go over here. We've got some signal there. We can tune that. And I wanted to point out that when we went from the FM station down in 94 um, megahertz, it was in the wide FM, which is the kind of signal that you have there. Here it changed to narrow FM, which is what's used in the UHF and the VHF ham band. So this is the VHF ham band. There's another uh, signal there. We can double click on that and see if we can uh, tune that in. It looks like things are kind of quiet this afternoon. But the point of this was just to give you a quick idea of how to make uh, tuning selections. And so you can see you can tune using the waterfall or you can tune using the up and down here on the uh, frequency numbers at the top of the display. Or you can use the number pad on your computer and just type in the frequency. So. That is the quick overview of the SDR Sharp software. Um, there are really good quick start guides on the rtlsdr.com website. I would encourage you to take a look at those guys. Uh, and there are a lot of YouTube videos showing a lot of fun things that you can do with your software defined radio. One of the recognized shortcomings of the RTL SDR dongle is that it tends to run a bit hot. I found that using a short USB extension that gets the dongle up and away from my laptop is helpful. I wouldn't use it when it's in the sun or in an otherwise hot environment. Also, unplug it from the USB port when you're done using it. A neat thing you'll find on the RTL SDR website is that they also recommend several other SDR dongles besides the one they sell. Since they are based on the same RTL2832 chip, you can have some confidence that they'll work the same and be compatible with the same software. After you get some experience with this whole idea of software-defined radio and SDR dongles, you'll be pleasantly surprised at the various signals you can monitor with your device. Look for an upcoming video using your SDR to monitor aircraft flying near you. You'll be able to see their position, call sign, altitude, and speed, just like an FAA controller. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Subscriptions are important metrics for small YouTube channels like mine, so I really appreciate it. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.